This is a lesson on the concept of electric potential in the unit on electrostatics. Electric potential is a kind of weird topic, a weird concept to get used to, and so I have a whole lesson on electric potential. And I want to start with the fact that um, electric potential is the capacity of an electric field to do work on a charge if a charge, if a charge were present in the field. And just kind of stop here because what I like to compare this to is what you may already know about gravitational fields and gravitational potential energy. So what we know is that uh, if an object is a certain amount above the ground, then we would say that this object has some sort of gravitational potential energy. Um, and it's uh, when I look at that, the universal equation is G M1 M2 over R. So it two, takes two masses in order for an object to have gravitational potential energy. That's potential energy. But what I can think of instead, and this is where the idea of electric potential lies, is if I take that object away and I just think about that height above the ground, what I would say is that um, the gravitational field has a potential to do work. When there's no object there, it, there's no object to have energy, but the field has a potential to do work if you put a mass in the gravitational field. And this is exactly the way I think about uh, uh, electric potential. The electric potential is the capacity of an electric field to do work on a charge if the charge were there. So if I have some sort of electric field and I put, and I think about um, a location in that electric field, that location in the electric field has a potential to do work on a charge. There's no charge in there yet. But the electric field exists and it has a potential to do work. So that's how I think about electric potential. What I'm going to note for you is that it is a scalar quantity. And I'm noting this very uh, distinctly for you and also early in the lesson because I've seen students for years get caught up with, we've been working with electric fields and electric force and decomposing vectors and thinking in terms of vectors. But electric potential is a scalar, which means it does not have direction. You cannot decompose it. You just add it like numbers. The symbol for electric potential is V, and that's because its units comes from volts. That's the units of electric potential. And like I said, it's the amount of energy required to move a charge. So that is joules per coulomb. And those are the SI units of electric potential is joules per coulomb, but those are simplified down to volts. So you can see when we move forward in this material, we will give electric potential in terms of voltage. Electric potential is associated with a position in an electric field. Notice that it's just a position somewhere in an electric field. We associate a potential with that position. Position is always measured relative to a specified origin as well. So um, just like gravitation, we have to specify a, a zero, especially with just gravitational potential energy near the surface of the Earth, where the value is mgh, right? Like we have to specify where is that h being measured from. A special property of electric potential is that we frequently think in terms of electric potential difference. And that's associated with the potential difference between two positions. The advantage of this is we don't actually need to know the potential of one position. We don't need to know the values of the potential A or the potential B. We don't need to know those values. All we care is about the potential difference between those two points. That potential difference is what contributes to any change in motion of a charged object that we would put in that field. The electric force is conservative, so these differences are path independent. So if I move along an electric field uh, in this direction, along the electric field from maybe uh, VA to VB, I have a potential difference, VB minus VA, well, when I look at if I follow another path, let's say I follow this path, 
Notice that because this is a scalar, I start with some sort of initial value and I end with some sort of final value so that this potential difference, whether I follow the blue line or the green line, I have the same potential difference. We see that the difference is path independent. Uh, I also prepared a more mathy way to think about electric potential, and that's in reference to electric fields. This is the proper definition. It deals with vector calculus of how to find a potential difference. And again, we have this dependence on the electric field. Since there's an electric field, that electric field has a potential to do work. The electric field, as we see it in vector calculus, is a vector that represents how fast and in what direction the electric potential is changing. Okay, so that's a little bit different than the previous slide, uh, how to think about what electric potential is and how it relates to electric field. Again, the electric field is a vector that represents how fast and in what direction the electric potential is changing. And what I've shown you over here is contour lines for a point charge. We know that a point charge, and when I look at this figure, I know that the electric field lines are pointing away from the charge, so there must be a positive charge here. And these lines around here represent electric potential. And you're not surprised that there's going to be constant values along a perfectly spherical surface. Remember, a charge is 3D, so this is a spherical surface, and we're just taking a slice of it. And what we see is that the electric field points outward, and towards the center of the circle, the electric field is a larger magnitude. And you can also see that these potential lines are closer together. These values over here, 20, 15, 10, are the values of the electric potential. So that'd be 10 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts. And we can see that the electric field lines point from high to low potential. So that's what I have over here. Electric field lines always point from high to low potential. And that's consistent to what I'm saying, that the electric field line is a vector that represents how fast and in what direction. So when I look at the electric potential, the electric potential is becoming less in this direction. So the field line will point in that direction because it gives the direction of change. It's becoming smaller in the direction of the electric field line. Also, if I were to draw a vector of that electric field, and we already know electric field for a point charge, KQ over R, squared, um, we know that's going to fall off. It's going to be really large, close to the charge, and so we can see that the potential lines are close together, and the electric field being a large value means that the potential is changing value more quickly, closer to the charge than it is farther away. And we can see this with the values. From this point to this point, we lose five volts, and from this point to this point, we also lose 5 volts. And we can see that 20 to 15 and 15 to 10. So this is a 5 volt change and this is a 5 volt change. And you can see as you move away, the electric field line will become smaller. There's going to be a smaller one here than there is here. That is a description of how fast that electric potential is changing. It changed 5 volts in a smaller distance, so there was a larger rate of change closer to the charge than there was farther away. And that's represented by the length of these vectors. It's larger near the charge than it is as we move away from the charge. And that's because the rate of change of that potential is smaller as you move farther away from that charge. Positive charges move from high to low potential. So when I think about potential values, if I put a positive charge in here, it's going to move away from the other positive charge, and it will move along the electric field lines from high potential to low potential. If I put a negative charge in here, it wants to move towards the positive charge, and so negative charges move against electric field lines, and that's from high low to high potential. And what I have up here, this is the value of the potential, and we'll take a look at how to calculate the actual potential of a point charge. But this is just a relative graph of its values. We can see that it would be 10 here, and 15 here, and 20 here. 
And what we see is that positive charges move down the potential from regions of high potential to low potential, but a negative charge will move up that potential. And often they call a negative charge like a salmon in a potential because it moves towards higher values. And so it's sort of the opposite direction of what you expect with a positive charge. I chose this diagram because it has the equipotential lines up here and down on the charge here. Uh, you can see the values change and all along this line you will have the same potential all along that same radius. So let's investigate a little bit further this relationship between electric potential and electric field. And a nice way, a very convenient analogy for this is thinking in terms of contour lines with uh, topological graphs. And so this is representing a mountain maybe or a large hill. Uh, but when I think about it in regards to electricity or le charges and electric potential and electric field, a high point would be where a positive charge would be. And um, something below zero would be where a negative charge would be. And you can see in this area where the potential lines are closer together, right? Where the contour lines of a certain value are closer together, you can see the rate of change is very quick in that region. And the lines will be closer together. As opposed to where there's a steeper change, those lines will be farther apart. Will be larger in regions where these lines are closer together, and they're going to be smaller in lines where they're farther apart. Uh, we can see that over here as well. The rate of change of the potential is large on this side, so there's going to be in a large electric field vector. We can see along this side the electric potential is not changing as much as we move out and so those electric potential lines will be farther apart and the electric field will be smaller in value as you get out here uh, and when we think about the electric field the units of electric field when we first learn them is newtons per coulomb but in this situation it's useful to think of it in their other form which is volts per meter uh, closer to a charge over on this side, the electric field is going to have a larger volt per change in meter over on this side than it will on the other side over on this side where you have an equivalent change in voltage over a larger distance. So that electric field is going to be smaller out here than it is in the region closer where the lines are closer together. And so we keep looking at these lines. I, you know, we're familiar with them as contour lines on a topological map, but they're actually called equipotential surfaces for when we're looking for at electric potential and charges. And so equipotential surfaces have a constant voltage along the surface. And you may see this in different textbooks called equipotential lines. Um, and in a 2D situation, we do see these in lines, but remember this is a 3D situation. Charges are all 3D, so even though we're re representing it as a 2D situation, this is in three dimensions, and so the surface here will be for like a sphere. That's the symmetry around a charge is spherical, so we would use the surface area for a sphere. The electric potential surfaces are useful for visualizing the effect of the through space. Uh, and what we're going to notice with these electric field lines is they always are perpendicular to the electric potential surfaces. And you can see that in here. They're all uh, perpendicular to it. I have more complex charge distributions on the next slide. But what I did want to point out here as well is that the electric field out here is going to be a smaller vector than in here. And you can see that the lines, these equipotential lines are farther apart from one place to another. So where they're closer together, you're going to have a larger electric field, a larger volt per meter, as opposed to out here where you're going to have a smaller electric field and a smaller volt per meter. Let's look at a few more charge distributions, the equipotential surfaces of charged configurations. 
Um, I want to look at this one down here. These are two negative charges down here. And out to the side, uh, the OpenStax College Physics text just has the equipotential surfaces around two negative charges. That's what it looks like when you add it up. There's one big circle, and then in between they get more distinguished between themselves, but um, at some point they kind of just conglomerate together. This picture includes the charges, not only the charges, but also the electric field lines. And what I want you to know in this picture is that all of the electric field lines are perpendicular to the equipotential surfaces. Notice that. So the equipotential surfaces gives an idea of the direction of the electric field in that region. If you would just have equipotential surface, that's what it will tell you. And the distance between them will also relate to the magnitude of the electric field there. Here we have a positive charge and a negative charge. We can see that the electric field lines are continuous from the positive charge to the negative charge. And all of the equipotential surfaces are perpendicular to that, those electric field lines. That's always true. Uh, with this capacitor, these are two parallel plates, and in the center here, uh, uh, in here, uh, we will get a constant electric field. Uh, and so the potential, we can see that the potential is high near a positive charge. There's 100 volts. And then as we move along the electric field lines, the potential becomes smaller in value when we get to the negative charge and that will have um, the smaller potential. Uh, so these are what these um, equipotential lines look like. We can see over here, uh, this is also perpendicular. We have a little bit of curving out to the side, but in the middle we have this perfect um, right angle of these electric field lines to the equipotential lines. So that's sort of a description, uh, uh, an idea, this concept of electric potential is that we think about it in relation to the electric field, how the electric potential relates to the electric field, and that is sort of the definition, the mathematical definition of it here is with an integral. But also, and often more powerfully, we think about the electric potential as the capacity of an electric field to do work. 